You're listening to Behind the Bulldogs, brought to you by Ferris State Athletics. Off the left side, to the end zone! Touchdown, Bulldogs! If I'm even having like a bad day on the course or something, I just look down at it and just feel like thankful that I'm able to be out there. Making sure that we're like where our feet are mm-hmm. and we're not thinking about outside distractions. Welcome in everybody to episode two of Behind the Bulldogs here. Season two, episode two. Brandon Worth, Tatum Outlaw. We are back once again with another great episode. And uh, sorry we missed you last week. We had a little bit of a... A, a conflict that we had to work through. I ended up getting sick. He had a conflict he had to work through. <laughs> yeah, so, and Tatum had to leave yes. for a volleyball tournament that we were going to have to talk about. Yes. Super impressive. Uh, but we're back, and we're glad that you're back with us. Big thanks to everybody that makes this show possible. And uh, we got some really good uh, interviewees coming on the show here, Tatum, uh, too, that you've gotten to know really well yes. uh, over on the football team. And uh, for good reason why they're coming on the show. They're a great group of guys. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely when I was thinking about who are we going to have on next, took me a second, thought of those two. They're a lot of fun. Some of my best friends, they're really starting off the season hot. So I think you guys will enjoy it as much as we did. For sure. Jeremiah has been in the end zone a couple times this season as well. Trinidad, uh, just a GLIAC Offensive Player of the Week performance this last week against yeah, Ashland. Something which slight. <laughs> just a little slight for him, you know, for the football team. But I mean, we might as well talk about that here while we're here. Uh, I mean, dominant, dominant performance there uh, against the Ashland Eagles. I mean, it was just phenomenal. I mean, that's a good football team. Mm-hmm. That's I a good mean, football team they beat. And yeah. not only beat, they dominated. I mean, they got the 56 to 3 win against Lake Erie La- or the yeah. week prior. And we were like, man, it, this is this is a, a, a right opponent. Yeah. We know that we yeah. can play better. And I mean, they they show up and they they just absolutely dominate Ashland from start to finish. From the opening kickoff, Tariq oh, yeah. Brett on the Jets goes 100 yards for a return. Wasted no time. I mean, just a phenomenal performance from the football team. Yeah, I mean, knowing their history with Ashland, I knew it was going to be a tight game. But And we watch it when we can. Obviously, I'm in season as well. But I don't know. I was like, oh, they're starting off hot. Like, surely, like, it'll be a little closer. But, I mean, they just came out, took care of business, and then turning around, focusing on the next game. So it was Absolutely. fun to watch. Yeah, it was fun to watch. And this team, we know, can get hot really quick. Mm-hmm. And that's the, the number one thing about them is, you know, they can really turn it around. I mean, mm-hmm. you look to the Pitt State game. We were thinking, man, this team, like, against good competition, they might struggle. And then they bounce back in a huge way against Lake Erie, and then they roll that right over into Ashland. That's a really nice bounce back for them. Uh, But you guys haven't needed a bounce back yet. I mean, you guys have been on an absolute tear. Talk about the two trips. You leave with seven wins, Mm -hmm. no blemishes, against ranked opponents. I think that's a successful road trip. Yeah, I would say so as well. Um, We've had a lot of uh, changes. We've dealt with some adversity already. I mean, our assistant coach just had her baby. Congratulations, coach. Yep. But we've done all of our travels without her. And, you know, Tia and Hannah, they're like a dynamic duo. We need both of them. And obviously, like Tia has been she's been doing this for a while. There was no worry in our mind, but it's different for us. So we dealt with that to begin with. But I think we've just been coachable. We've done as much as we can with the scout that we have. I mean, these tournaments we've had, it's been quick turnarounds, but um, we just do everything to the best of our ability, quick turnaround, respect all, fear none. (laughs) Absolutely. That's what we do. So What a great motto. And especially the first game out of all of them, obviously you won all seven, though that's huge. But the first night, West Texas. Ooh, I mean, that's that fun. That's the team to beat, right? Top yeah. three team. And you yeah. guys got it done. Just talk about that. It was a five set thriller and you guys really had to dig deep. I remember mm-hmm. watching that game. I mean, you were up early. They got a little bit of the momentum back at home. Man, it's going to be close. And then you guys just shut the door on them in that fifth set. Right. I mean, we don't pay attention to the rankings and all of the media involved and teams like that. But we know who West Texas is. We know where they come from. We know their history. And we just went out there. We followed our game plan that we had. I mean, they'd only played maybe a couple scrimmages before we played them. So the small game plan that we had um we just did everything to the best of our ability. We try to keep the same type of momentum, whether we're up or we're down. So we just came out ready to fight. And then there was obviously, if you watch, there was a point where we got down and I was like, ooh, it's getting close. Oh, but boy. Here we go. We turned it around quick. So that was one of our goals this season, just to like 
we get down, we get right back up in an instant. So we Absolutely. did Absolutely. Big performances across the board. We can't name out all individuals, but Kaylee Mott, Livy mm-hmm. Hanneman Delapi, of course. GLIAC Players of the Week, obviously. We had Trinidad as well. Uh, Mitch Middleton, Special Teams Player of the Week, not too long ago as well. Um, cross Country also went very well uh, while you guys were gone. I mean, really good performances across the board, sweeping men's and women's, perfect scores. And uh, the team's obviously rearing back. They're, they're at a really good performance at Michigan State as well, which is always a hard place to run. I mean, it's only oh, like sure. 90 degrees in a wide open golf course every <laughs> single year, regardless of when the meet is. It always happens to be 90 degrees, humid and gross, um, but they did very well. They were very gritty uh, and you got to see that on display. Cooper Source and Hannah Brock leading the way um, for this group. And that's the two that you'll be especially watching out for top on both sides, but uh, the team definitely has some depth. The, the spread looks good as far as from one to five, the time as far as what spread means. Obviously, the first time to your fifth time in mm-hmm. scores, you'd like to get that as close and as far up as possible. Right. So spread looks good. Uh, we'd love to see the back end starting to move up, but that's something that will take time with a, a really young group. So uh, there'll be a couple split squad meets upcoming. They'll be at Lansing. Then they'll be uh, going a little bit on the travel books like volleyball just went on, going to Kentucky as well as Illinois. So it'll be fun. Um, soccer as well. Well, uh, getting off against some really, really tough teams. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially you tough talk about schedule. yeah Cedarville to start the year is a really good team. Then you go play some former GLIAC teams um, in Finley and Ashland. Ashland's one of the top teams in the region. They fell in that one 2 nothing. But many people probably saw the scoreline at home. And they were like, oh, 2 nothing. They kind of got blown out. It was really Dog an, fight. It was a nothing nothing game except for two minutes of the yep. game. For two minutes of the game, they scored. They got the momentum back, right? They always coaches talk the next three minutes after you score, most vulnerable. They end up giving up another goal. But uh, I mean, especially when it looks like this defensive group uh, really, really played well in these first three games. Um, and the offense has been there, just needed the consistency, right. especially in these bigger games. Yeah, I mean, the fall, the fall sports are just having a ball right now. I mean, schedules are tough for everyone, but I think everyone's been working super hard. I know. Uh, so we can kind of see into the athletics a little bit more. Um, just We just got to keep going. It'll be fun to see how everything ends up. For sure. I'm sure you guys would probably love to play your first five at home if you had the choice to do so. Yeah, you know, have it, I've been not in Michigan longer than I've been <laughs> in Michigan. Um, a little difficult with the um, student part of being a student athlete, but wouldn't have it any other way. We're winning. Whether we were losing or winning, it'd be fun, but winning's always nice. Of course. Winning's always fun. <laughs> yeah, winning's that's, always nice. Yeah, that's why you play the game. Yes. Right? You gotta win it. So uh, great results as well from uh men's and women's golf. Uh women's uh, wrapping up at Folds of Honor, a really prestigious tournament. Uh really good performances from the women, I believe, finishing top three, as well as the men's side in their home invitational, the Bulldog Fall Classic, also finishing top three as a team. Coach Stark got the chance to talk to him yesterday. He's loving where the group's at. The, the a lot of the groups, uh, especially on the men's side, I know. They wanted to really putt well yesterday. That was really the reason they went from uh, potential contending to winning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's really the difference was just the, around the greens, a short game. I know that's something they're going to work on. It. And it's obviously the fall. Right? You're, right. you're getting in a lot of this competition. I mean, you guys know this kind of in the spring for you guys yes. kind of flipped over. You're playing the game. You're working on things. But at the end of the day, I mean, the scoreline, it, it really does. You don't want to say it doesn't matter because it does matter at the end of the it's day. The I mean, talking to McCoy yesterday, yeah. um, for those that saw the interview, uh, he handled that like a champ. He really was uh, he was disappointed because he knew he didn't play well because he wanted to win and he knew he could have played better. And, and that's the champion mentality right. that, that McCoy wants to play with. So uh, th- those are the things where, you know, you're like, man, yeah, your guys are on the right track and they, they, they just want to play and perform at right. their best all the time and as athletes it'll I mean, come we, together. we can understand that. Yeah, totally. It'll all come together, I think, especially for the teams in their quote unquote off season right now. Never is there really an off season, but never it'll all come together. It's a time to figure things out. If you're going to make the mistakes, make it now, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Big shout out to tennis as well. Some good uh, fall results coming up here with that schedule for coach Doran. Uh, we'll get into them as more uh, the season goes on for their fall season, uh, gearing up for the spring, but uh, really fun things happening here at Ferris state oh, and yeah. uh, very fun things. Obviously since we uh, here before we get to the interview, we'll touch on this new facilities on the way. I know Tatum, you're probably very excited as much as I am just to see you have un- you have fortunately been able to see yes. the rendition of an old building to a new building. I mean, just right. talk about now being able to play in such a prestigious facility and just the fact that, you know, you're not in the basement anymore. It's not 80 degrees. You're in a well air conditioned unit that it was really, a really fun and ve- really fun venue for fans. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I think a lot of people are 
have wished that they would come at a later or earlier time, but I love just seeing it all unfold. We always make jokes like we came from the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> we started in not so great of terms and now we're, you know, I'm just grateful for it. Seeing where we started to where we are now, we've worked for this. I'm grateful for it. it. Keeps us grounded though, but it's it's nice to have nice facilities that we deserve. And just seeing the public come in, they're just always in here. They're peeking in. They're saying hi at practice. I'm I'm glad that it's a facility that people just feel like they can walk into. Yeah. And just I don't know. It's so inviting. Yeah, I feel yeah. Like you could agree. Yeah, they could yeah. be a part of the team. So yeah. yeah, it's really fun. The dormitory, the new field, eventually the new field house going to be huge for the program, right. as my partner would say back in the day. But we got a great <laughs> interview to get to. Trinidad Chambliss and Jeremiah Lee are standing by, so uh, mm-hmm. I think we should bring them on in. Yes, All let's right. get to it. Let's swing it to the interview. Now joining us here in studio, we got a pair of Fair State football players joining us, Trinidad Chambliss and Jeremiah Lee. Fellas, what's going on? Welcome to the show. That's Thanks up. for having us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you guys on the show and uh, bye week for you guys. A little bit of an early bye week, but of course, we got to start out with thumping against the Eagles, a team that you guys have played very close. Fair State has played very close in years past. It was really hyped up to be a close game. What was it about the opening kickoff and then on out to the final whistle that you guys just went out there and just dominated that football game? Yeah, going into the Ashland game, um, we've actually had you know trouble with them before, and um, uh, going into it, you know, we thought they'd be a decent team, and they were. Um, and it was good to you know have a start like that, you know, Tyreek. Being electric, you know, kickoff return team was money. And, um, you know, for first drive with offensively, um, it was great to, you know, get down there and get a get a good quick score. Yeah, Coach Coach really wanted us to come out hot and, uh, you know, make ourselves, like, out there, you know what I mean? Like, be a – come in the game, ready to go, defense coming in hot, uh, special teams, everything. So, you know, we did that. And Reek uh, returning that first kickoff was crazy. So, you know, that set the tone for the whole game, and it got us rolling. For sure. And uh, we'll obviously get into to you guys personally here in a little bit. But obviously, the bye week, it's a little bit earlier than it's been in years past. Obviously, with week zero, now that it's a possibility for us, is obviously, I'm sure, super nice. What are you guys doing to enjoy a little bit of the bye week away from football? Practices have been shorter and less intense. But, you know, same thing, watching film, um, read defenses and kind of reading and watching film on AIC and getting ready for that week. So. Yeah, it's kind of a week for us to keep working, um, keep getting better every day, um, working on the little things that kind of you kind of like don't work on through the season. I mean, you do, but it's like we can focus on it a little bit more this week that we have more time for it. So, you know, just working on little things and making sure we're sharp. For sure. I would imagine that my partner to the left would love to have a bye week uh, <laughs> yeah. in your part of the season. But you guys are going right at it, too. So uh, but bringing in Tatum as well from an athlete's perspective, uh, when it comes to really coming back from the bye week, obviously your guys' schedule, your routine changes so immensely when it comes to a bye week. Obviously, same routine, same practice. But I mean, you're not necessarily going through the mental reps. What are those things that you do? Uh, over the bye week and then really kind of the week after to get back on sharp, get back into the game, especially being such a big game coming out after the bye week, going on the road to a team that you only played once before last year. Yeah, um, during the bye week, we just got to stay focused and stay sharp and not get in that laissez-faire approach um, and just stay sharp, honestly, and be ready for AIC. Uh, I know it's going to be a long trip all the way in Massachusetts. Um, so we just got to be sharp and just ready for, you know, to play and, you know, not lose focus. So. Yeah, kind of like what he said, stay focused. Um, I mean, now, now that we have this bye week, we honestly can be watching film. So hopefully we can watch a little bit more film and prepare and be ready to go by next week. For sure. Uh, when it comes to your guys and your journeys, obviously we got Trent in our one of our recruiting class out of Forest Hills. Jeremiah, a little different. You decided to come as a transfer from U Indy. Uh, just talk about both of your Bulldog experiences and uh, what led you to Ferris State in the first place. Uh, me personally, um, my high school coach, I think, reached out to Coach Anise. Uh, I wasn't really, you know, a crazy prospect in high school. I usually actually I actually played basketball and I thought I was going to play basketball in college. But um, as time went on, I started receiving more football scholarships and, you know, coaches started to reach out more uh, in football and not as much basketball. And um, yeah, so that connection with my head coach and Coach Anise blossomed. And then he actually saw me at my high school. Um, saw how you know tall I was. He thought I was shorter than what I was. Which <laughs> oh, is funny. T- Tony, <laughs> come on! Yeah, he thought I'll, I was probably like five, five ten, but I, I'd say I'm six foot. Nah. <laughs> all right, all right, five eleven. No, J- <laughs> Jay foot. Lee's keeping you humble. That's for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, just created a relationship with Coach Nice. He came to one of my games and uh, got me on a visit here, and 
honestly, it was my best offer. I know they had, you know, success in the past with, you know, going to the playoffs and making a national championship appearance. And yeah, I just love the coaching staff and felt like home and I'm glad I came here. So do you miss basketball? Uh, yes, I do. Um, occasionally we play pickup basketball in the Wink Arena with our teammates. And yeah, I get that, you know, itch or yeah. <laughs> whatnot to play basketball again. I've actually talked to Bronx about maybe playing, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm pretty rusty right now. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Dual year. sport? We'll see. <laughs> Fifth year on the basketball team. There you go. It's, it's going to have to take like a summer for me to, you know, get back in the swing of things. But I don't know. We'll see. That's a possibility. But right now, focus on football. So, okay. It's nice. funny. Um, yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Uh, coming out of high school, I wasn't really recruited that like highly. Um, so UND was my best offer. So I went with UND. Um, I went there uh, my true freshman year I played. And then my sophomore year I played again and was all conference those two years. And then I just felt like I wanted to be able to play. I wanted to play in the national championship. And I just felt like that wasn't going to happen <clears throat> there. So, you know, I, I hopped in the portal. And when I got in the portal, uh, Steven East came and got me out and offered me and when I got here, I was just ready to go, ready to work. Um, obviously last year I got hurt. Um, so I was, I kind of had to take my red shirt year and, and just prepare uh, mentally, physically, get my body ready. Um, and you know, I took this off season seriously <laughs> and uh, devoted my whole life to football. So, you know, I, I just came back ready for the season. And when I uh, got my opportunity, you know, I tried to make the best of it. And, you know, it's going so going great so far. Um, I love the coaches. Um, a lot of support from everybody and you know I'm just glad to be here and hopefully we can get another natty for sure and obviously Ferris is a winning program we know that but what else was appealing to you besides the two national championships oh. under our belt no it seemed like a family when I first came here um it was Javon Shaw he uh had brought me on my visit and he was like super close um he was cool he he really uh he, he kept it real. I mean, he just told me all the in and outs of Ferris State. And, you know, a lot of the people that were here were showing a lot of love. So, you know, it just felt, made me feel welcomed. And, you know, and yeah. you said you were injured and you redshirted last season. Tell me about that, what your thoughts were, how you kept your focus, how you kept your determination and drive. Because I've dealt with injury. I'm sure you have it, too. It's really hard mentally. Yeah. I mean, uh, surrounding myself with people that wanted to be great, too. Um, obviously, Trinidad was um, one of my closest friends as soon as I got here. And, you know, me and him were both really focused on having a good year and trying to come in strong and be able to help the team win. So keeping somebody like that close to me was good for me. And, uh, you know, I try to motivate him, too, and keep him going, too. So, you know, it's like uh, it's a great thing to have. You feel me? Like, just yeah. a good person to have around me. So, you know, I just can't be focused. Yeah, and I can, I mean, and I know you personally, but I can definitely see the motivation and drive you have. And it shows this season because I think you started out hot and showed people who you are, why you're here. You're here to work hard and get stuff done. So, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and especially for you guys, I mean, wearing the Bulldog is really an honor. And it's an honor that a lot of people in their careers will, will see. And it's always a crowded room. Obviously, Jeremiah, you see that yeah. here in your first year. Trent, you've obviously been through the ranks of all the quarterbacks. Yep. I mean, just talk about, especially, I mean, Coach Anise, he, he likes to play multiple guys at multiple positions at multiple points in the game. Just talk about the interaction that you have with each other and, you know, the sacrifice that it really takes to, you know, we're going to play multiple quarterbacks in a game. We're going to play a lot of different looks when it comes to our skills, guys, and uh, just how you guys adapt to that. Yeah, obviously, uh, coming to Ferris State, you know what you're getting into. Uh, great athletes from all over the country. Uh, we get recruits from Florida, uh, obviously Michigan, just all over, transfers in the transfer portal. And so we knew that and we know that coming here, we accept the challenge, uh, you know, going to battle or going to, you know, compete with, you know, other athletes in camp and uh, during the season. And it just pushes us and it keeps us, you know, keep getting better. And me and him, I know he mentioned that in the off season, um, us like, you know, kind of sharpening each other and, you know, making each other great. And uh, I can appreciate him because when he first came here, um, he helped me, you know, stay consistent in the weight room and stay consistent, you know, with film and whatnot and just staying focused on football. And, yeah, I just really appreciate, you know, having him around and, you know, other people around to help me and whatnot. And for us to know that <clears throat> there's other great, you know, quarterbacks and obviously slots here, like I said, it just it, get, it just gets us better and it gets us prepared for, you know, the year and the season. And I've mentioned this before, like seeing the defense every day in camp was crazy. Like 
they're actually like one of the best defenses in the nation. Not if like they probably are. They right? are. They definitely are the best. And it just <laughs> it just helped us so much. And seeing defenses um, like from other colleges and whatnot, it's just wow. There's so much change and it's just such a difference. Like these guys don't compete with our defense and. Just knowing that it's just really good, and uh, I feel confident in our team right now, and we uh, we're rolling. So yeah, I mean, uh, our our slots room, our slot room is deep. So you know, all of us are building off each other. And, you know, when we get our opportunities, we try to take advantage of them to the fullest because we know there's somebody else there, and it also helps us too. Like, um, you know, we we watch film together, we we go work on routes together. Like, all of us are we we're all building off of each other, and you know, it's just a good thing to have and that competitiveness, and you know, just keep growing off each other honestly it, it helps a lot yeah for sure we'll get into the fun stuff now outside of football <laughs> what do you guys like to do me personally um like when it's nice outside i like to golf um with my friends i went on a golf outing this past summer with a group of friends shout out peyton bush <laughs> and Caden Metalitis and uh, Ethan Erickson. It was actually, I went with Ethan Erickson. Uh, he's on the basketball team here, if you don't know. Yeah, yeah, which you guys are from the same area. Yep, Grand yeah. Rapids, went to the same high school, grew up together, met him in third grade, one of my best friends. Um, Who's better at basketball? Ethan, I'll give it to Ethan. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Can you shoot with him? Oh, nah. Okay, Not there even you go. close, but yeah, I mean, like to golf, I like to hang on my friends, um, go on the boat. You know, every once in a while in the summer, um, like to watch movies, binge TV shows, play card games with, you know, my teammates and whatnot, um, hang out with family and, you know, yeah, it's pretty much it, honestly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much the same. Um, I kind of I like fishing, though. I love fishing. I try to take him Ooh, fishing one time. Ooh, all right. All right. I tried, I didn't to, know I tried that. to take him fishing one time and he couldn't even touch the fish. I can't. It was crazy. I can't <laughs> oh, it. no. I like. Yeah, the, the teeth and it being slimy and then like the it teeth. squirming. I can't do that. Right. Like I can't at all. So Bro, I love. All right, I love fishing, playing basketball, hanging out with my friends. I love. I love seeing my nephews and nieces. Uh, I love being around them, watching them grow up and stuff. It sucks right now because I'm far away. But you know, when I get the chance to go back home and see them, I I love going back to hang out with them and see them. But yeah, that's pretty much what I do in my off time too. So all right, uh, what kind of fishing? There's a lot bass. of good fishing out there. Bass fishing. Bass okay. Fishing. What's the PB? Uh, I'd probably say, I think I caught a six pounder. Yeah, probably six pounds. Probably about six pounds. Close to seven, I think. Seven? Uh, Close to it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's so. a pretty big fish. I don't know okay. Nothing about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Trinidad, handicap. What's it looking like? I have no idea, honestly. It's been so long. <laughs> My friend actually is coming up here this weekend, Peyton, as I mentioned him before. Um, he said he wanted to golf at Khaki, and I was like, dude, I haven't golfed in since summer. Like, it's been so long. And yeah, yeah. You know, with golf, you got to stay consistent to be have good. To. So have to. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> We'll do another episode, and then we'll check back in and see okay. how you did yeah. this weekend. We there will. we go, yeah. Once we get to another football episode, <laughs> yeah. we'll bring it back and say, hey, how's Trin's uh, golf game going? Yeah, we'll <laughs> hold you accountable on that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, we appreciate you guys coming on the show, and uh, we'll leave you with the last question, as always, when we ask every single individual on the show. What's your favorite thing about being here at Fair State and being a Bulldog? Um, You want to go first? I can go first. Um, go for it. <laughs> I love how competitive we are. I love how every every sport at this school is competitive. Um, I, and I love the support from all the teams and everybody just, you know, gathering around and coming to all e each other's events and, you know, just showing love to everybody. So that's why. Um, I would have to say the people here, um, like I've met one of my best friends or many of my best friends on the football team, uh, basketball team. Um, and yeah, just the relationships that I created here. I've just been amazing and I can bounce off with that too. Like, yeah, all the guys here are great athletes and I just like being around great athletes because it makes me better. So just, yeah, just being around great people and creating relationships. So Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much yes, for joining you. us. Thank we appreciate you. your time and uh, enjoy the bye week. Yeah. You guys earned it. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Big thanks to Trinidad and Jeremiah for joining us. Two more great guests. We can't wait to bring on more for you guys here this fall and, uh, uh, Tatum, it was your idea to bring them on, so I got to give yes. you credit. Really, really nice picks. Uh, what were some of the things that you really enjoyed in that interview? Yeah, um, just hearing like the inner workings of how their practices are going, their thoughts about season, hearing about Jeremiah's transferring. I mean, I don't think I've ever asked him about that before, hearing how he's redshirted. I think 
these guys have got a great mindset and I'm just excited to see how they do as the season progresses. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. And I really love uh, for those of you that have seen the episode now, you'll see the artwork of the picture that we use with both of them both hugging in the end zone. It only seems fitting, right? I mean, for those guys, it's not necessarily a bromance, but it kind of feels yeah. that way when they're they're together. And it's, it's incredible to see the football guys, especially a lot of them. You see a lot of transfers coming in. You know, mm-hmm. they want a piece of fair state. They want a piece of a national mm-hmm. championship game, and we know how to get there. And so you see these guys from all walks of life coming together. And it's really a family at the end of the day. It's just really cool to see stuff like that. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's also why I wanted to have both of them on at the same time because I know they have that tight bond. They motivate each other and they even said that themselves. So I just think it's cool to see like how teammates can become brothers, be best friends. They've got each other along the way. And I just like seeing how they feel each other up. That's the best. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll leave you with the Ferris State Sports Slate before you go so you know what to be on the lookout for here this upcoming week. And uh, there's a lot starting on Friday the 20th. uh, Cross Country at Lansing Invitational. That'll be a split squad, most likely from uh, my sources, Schefter style. Um, You'll see a little bit of uh, a a split squad, men's and women's. So you won't see the full 20 on each side. You'll see probably about 10 or 8. So they'll be competing. Congrats and uh, ahead of time. And uh, good luck to them um, as well as women's soccer at Roosevelt, newest member of the conference, oh, yeah. going to their place. That'll be fun. Excited to see it's how a, that goes. That's a, yeah, for sure. Three o'clock game there from Roosevelt. And uh, you guys have a, a little game, uh, just a little game. Just a small yeah. little game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much the national game of the week, which you guys don't care, which yeah. is great. The game's a game. Yeah, six o'clock at Allendale against enemies. And it'll be a really fun game. And uh, as well, you guys will play at Wayne State on Saturday, the following day, two o'clock. So uh, you can be on the lookout and uh, cheer on for my partner and her team. They're doing a great job right now. Um, we also have men's tennis at Davenport. That is on Friday as well. And uh, women's soccer will be going to Kenosha for Wisconsin Parkside at one o'clock. So that game will be on Sunday, uh, the 22nd at one o'clock. And then a men's golf going to U Indy. So Coach Stark will be wheels up there for Indianapolis. And uh, we wish the best of luck at the home of the Greyhounds there for our golf team. It's the best time of the year. Conference play has started. Yes. So it's all or nothing now. <laughs> all or all or nothing. All Every, or nothing. Everything's on the line. No, Everything. It's, it's super fun. So yeah. well, that's episode two in the books. And we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And uh, we can't wait to see what we have in store here for episode three. I mean, we've gotten the creativity level through the roof. We're only two episodes in. We got a I long know. ways to go. I know. We just got to keep topping the next one and the next one. So Yeah, it's going to be hard because all these episodes are bangers right I now. I know. I'm already excited for the next one. We're not even done with this one. We're not even <laughs> done with this one. So yeah. we'll see you on the next episode here behind the Bulldogs. Big thanks to Dezos Digital. And until next time, we'll see you later, everybody. See ya. See ya.